Good evening, it's Joyful Hermit. Well, I did it. <laughs> I looked up eggnog, and sure enough, it's horribly high in in phosphorus and in, what's the other P word I'm not to have? Anyway, another one. And also, of course, has sugar in it, quite a bit of sugar. I'm trying to think of the other thing I'm not to have, phosphorus and... Well, it'll come to me. That's my head injury. I lose words, and then they come to me later. Um, as I know, my joke is, how long can I use that as my excuse? <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> so I found someone who loves eggnog. Actually, it's my neighbor. It was her husband who's allergic to it. So she took it off my hands, and tomorrow morning, she's going to get some wonderful frozen meats that are you know, pre-prepared with different sauces and stuff that just have too much salt in them, way too much. So she's delighted, I'm delighted, because she's helped me so much also. When I would go to ER, she would come over and feed and take the dogs out to go to the bathroom and get them to bed and that kind of thing. So I'm very grateful for her, and I wanted to do something for her, and this is working out great. Um, she's very eager to have some of my freezer things so that I cannot eat. But the eggnog, as I mentioned, that was a real bugaboo for me. And it's amazing because I think since I got off the island and I wasn't as broke and living such a hard, hard life, that I and I was yeah I was just I'd run through all the money trying to fix it up and everything else was in in the property the more you know I had a big mortgage and then I had a down payment and and um, <clears throat> I think I lost a lot of the detachment ability to detach and also um, just got into eating more and more sugar because it would help my pain level. It would augment um, keeping the pain under control because it boosts the endorphins and the dopamine, but it's not good for the body. However, I also had, um, I think it was when I was in the cathedral back in the Midwest, and I, would, I was adapting to total solitude especially with people, you know, not even speaking to me and things. I was shunned. I was really more isolated than what I had um, yet progressed in as a hermit to that degree of solitude. And um, so I would go to TJ Maxx, and I knew, all, I'm very gregarious. I knew all the staff there. They got used to me. And the manager liked to do extra wheeling and dealing with me. He thought it was fun. I would see something on sale, and I would, you know, get a better price for it. And that was when I was also buying things for the um, Women's Care Center. My mother had said she would help me with my work on Earth. And so, of course, it was her money, her, her and Dad's money, that I was using. But I, I got clothing that I would blend blend me in with people at the cathedral because that became important i realized a hermit is not hidden from the eyes of men if you're wearing a, a habit from the middle ages per se and sticking out like a sore thumb or looking like you're a religious brother or sister when you're not you're a hermit you're to be hidden from the eyes of humankind in the silence of solitude, to pass unnoticed by others. And so they don't even know what you are. You live your life privately, quietly, for the love of God. So, of course, you all know that this is my vocation, because I am still wonder, I probably should, maybe I shouldn't be, even if it's anonymous, I'm still a face that's talking and sharing these things. But... Um, I don't know, haven't had an answer definitively at all from God on, on this amount of exposure. But hermit life in this has not been my main focus of conversation. 
It's the spiritual life that is of utmost importance to us. So I'm back in boot camp, in renewal boot camp, boot camp 2.0 or something of the spiritual life and of detachment, of regaining the ability to just detach easily and not even think to get that eggnog. And I hadn't had it in years. I tell you, what a temptation. How ridiculous. But it just goes to show what little things can allure us that know in the spectrum of life do not matter. And uh, this uh, friend, she's a retired nurse, private messaged me. I had written to her about my temptation of the eggnog and and how... It was it had become humorous and silly and ridiculous in a way that I had such trouble that I, I hadn't looked up. I look up about everything else. I did have to look up spinach today. I'm taking some spinach back to the store because I can't have spinach. It's too high in phosphorus. Uh, and so can't that other P word's not coming. Anyway, um, so... She wrote back, and she says, oh, you can indulge on something now and then. Even with the sugar in it, you can have it. Or the, the added uh, phosphorus and the other word um, won't, won't harm your kidneys that much. And every now and then, indulge yourself. And I wrote back and explained in the spiritual life. When you desire to love God in, his lo- in himself, to attain to the fourth degree of love of God and to start fathoming how much God loves us and to desire to be able to love others like that, that it takes a, an ability to learn to train the will and the intellect to be selfless. God loves selflessly. But I don't. I'm still full of self, eggnog and all, and um, sugar, you know, and and whatever's going to help my pain, my back pain be eased up, you know. Whereas in the past, for years, I went without any medication. Yes, it was horrible and inhumane, actually, (laughs) but God was with me, and I could find him in my pain. And so I worked on that this afternoon of finding God in my pain because I looked up that eggnog and realized I cannot have that. That's off the off the scale of the P words. So um, that those those elements, minerals, I guess they are vitamins and minerals. Oh, and it also had vitamin A. That's very bad for kidneys. So lots of that. So. It's gone, and the other person is just delighted by it because <laughs> would never get it for herself because her husband's allergic and didn't want to, you know, be enjoying it in front of him. But she's loving it, and I found it quite easy to do and realized my foolishness and thought back about there I was, you know, getting getting these. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the clothes, but people at that cathedral dressed up. And my goal was to blend in, to pass unnoticed. So I got some enough variety of outfits um, for each season. It was back in the Midwest. And um, shoes, and I had to get a winter coat and things like that. Got very good deals. I even got some jewelry to wear and um, looked the part, looked how the other people dressed. They dressed up going to the cathedral in the Midwest back then. And lo and behold, it wasn't long until I started having the mystical ecstasies. So it was like God was saying, "Uh uh-uh, no. (laughs) You know, to pass unnoticed, you're going to have to do what they wanted was me to not come to Mass. So that's that ended up eventually what happened. But I've got these clothes now to get rid of, and that won't be hard to do at all. 
there's not an attachment to those. They were really rather uncomfortable. But um, it's just doing it, the energy to do it. And I prefer reading now, or, or you know, trying to read. I don't retain well, but trying to read and to do other things of uh, the spiritual life, going back through notes that I had taken on books I'd read and being reminded of all these things. And then today I thought, this is boot camp, boot camp 2.0. I have to do a revised version to remind me of the detachment I had before. So I was explaining to this friend, this retired nurse friend, it's it does it's not a matter of indulging or not indulging it's the ability to realize none of it matters whether you have it or whether you don't have it it doesn't matter what matters is learning selflessness so that you can learn and grow in loving god in himself and that's one aspect I realize today is how God loves us selflessly. He is so selfless. And he doesn't indulge. God doesn't. Well, he indulges in loving us. That's what he indulges in is love. So I think, I think it's going to come back to me pretty quickly here, all the, the detaching and the dying to self at certain levels, then the Holy Spirit is going to start showing me deeper levels that I have to detach and die to self. It'll get harder. <laughs> and um, and some things I, I may say, Lord, I, I too weak or something. I like Like if I had to part with the pups, that would be hard for me right now. Um, so I better start praying for that because it'll happen at some point. Some, you know, something will come along that will test me. And also, I do like things that my mother left me, some tangible items. When I want to feel her, I will touch those things. They have her DNA in them. And I sense her then. <laughs> and uh, she was strong. She was a strong person. So, and my dad also, same thing. But, um, of course, for the love of God and loving God and himself, all of it. Now, I would find homes for the things. Niece or something who would want them. Or if, if my oldest daughter would. My other daughter isn't interested in, in family things, but... Um, I would find people who they had meaning for first to give to them, to be thoughtful of family items or things that ancestors had built with their own hands. Uh, one, one built furniture. So I have a couple things like that. So anyway, um, it's, it's uh, dying to self boot camp, um, reminding to learn that we really need nothing but God. And what we eat doesn't matter. I've sort of had an adjustment. My, my lentil gruel tonight, uh, French lentils with mushrooms and celery. I add a little bit of carrot for color. Garlic, leeks. It was all sort of brownish looking, greenish brownish. And, of course, no salt. Um, I think I had basil and thyme in it. But I had to cut out other types of seasonings that would have enhanced it. You know, things that aren't good, that I can't have. It said put spinach leaves in. Well, spinach also is bad. Um, so, for, for, bad, for already damaged kidneys. It's okay if your kidneys are okay, but once they're damaged, that changes your body. And for the love of God in himself, I am doing what I'm supposed to do to keep going. For, the, uh, for whatever is the greater path of suffering, 
And for me, staying alive is the greater path of suffering because of my spine just standing there cooking was just, oh my goodness, the pain in my body right now is sickening. And I can tell I look worse when it pain is up, but my eyes get red and sunken in. But that's all, all for the love of God and himself. All my suffering is. So I'm I'm working this. I'm, I'm in training, boot camp, all for the love of God, boot camp. And um, you may think, oh my goodness, this is intense. This is ridiculous. But I explained to this friend, a nurse friend, it has to be like this. To train the will and the intellect, the mind and the will that are in the center of the soul. To have this become second nature. Selflessness, a dying to self. It's also the fifth S of my nine S's of my hermit platform that undergirds the rule of life, which... Another hermit from the, I think, 1700s, this Richard, this hermit hermit named Richard in England. I read his biography, and the gospel rule, the gospel rule is the perfect rule of life, is the best rule of life for a hermit, or any, any of us, is the gospel, is are the scriptures, living the scriptures as our rule of life. So that's my rule of life. And the nine S's are S words that my spiritual dog gave me three to try to live and focus on after I was, uh, after we had the ceremony of my private consecration as a hermit for the church and for God. I'm God's hermit. But um, then the Holy Spirit gave me six more, wanted it to be nine. Nine is the number of gestation. So I have nine S's that were given to me by the Holy Spirit, three of them through the spiritual dot. Silence, solitude, and slowness. Then suffering, selflessness, that's the fifth one, stillness, stability, Mm, there's one other S I'm slipping up on, and then serenity. All things that through acts of the will and um, the intellect, knowledge of the words, what they mean through prayer to undergird my hermit life of living, trying to live the gospel. Serenity has touches of the numinous to it but still serenity is a state of mind and attitude that we can develop with our intellect and will also but of course the graces of them come from god from the holy spirit who who enacts for god the graces and the love of god in us so um I thought there was selflessness, the fifth S. And I was struggling with wanting to, oh my, I savored that eggnog. I admit it. It tasted so good. And I really felt as if I could feel my endorphins and my dopamine just spiking up, giving me a boost from the pain. <laughs> But we suffer for the love of God in himself. And I was reminded of what the Virgin Mary told me. You will find him in your pain. You will find Jesus in your pain. He will comfort you. Find him in your pain. And it's true. Right here he is, right in my pain. He's in my spine. My spine. Oh, this was wonderful. I had these Down syndrome friends, two men, Wesley and Tom, and I would take them to church to Mass with me. They loved Mass. And bring them home for Sunday dinner and lunch, or Sunday afternoon after the 11 a.m. Mass. And my son helped and became friends with them, and and it was very good. And, and if my 
other daughters happened to be home from college or after they graduated. They all knew Wesley and Tom. And and it was hard for, in some ways, um, one of the daughters wasn't at all used to that um, and um, was just used to our own little family unit. So, but it was good. And um, one time Wesley, oh, well, he fell in love with me, Wesley did. He, well, he won, He says, why can't we be husband and wife? He says, <laughs> I had to explain to him that I was already accounted for. And, and I explained to him, too, that he was very, very holy and chosen by Jesus, too. He, oh, he was so holy. But one time we were driving, I was driving him home, I think we'd been to Stations of the Cross and we dropped off Tom first and then I went took Wesley on to his group home and Wesley turned to me and he says said my name twice nah, nah. Um, he says you have a cross you're, you're, you have a cross in your back he said it again he says your back is the cross and he just, he had a big paunch. He was about 40. Big paunch, old, older for a Down syndrome man. And leaned back and just smiled. And like, he knew it. He knew that I had a cross in my back, that my back was the cro a cross. And how true is that? It was God speaking through him, reminding me. So anyway, when I moved, though, then uh, another family, well, Wesley pretty much, I think he went with the group home to a church then, and he was starting to fail in, in physically and all. And then Tom, though, a family, picked up the mantle and took him to Mass and home for lunch and things and had his birthday party and I used to do that kind of thing with them and and um, it was time for me to move on and it was getting to be difficult for me physically to uh, especially with Richard who was in a wheelchair I had trouble getting that in and out of my trunk and pushing him it was uh, by the grace of God it was miraculous I could even try it but it did um, as I got worse and older, it it became very difficult. So I had to cease doing that, but then I moved away and um, not super far, but too long to drive for me to sit to drive back much. So that was that. But anyway, um, the suffering we do, I am reminded, is is for the love of God in himself and to learn another form of selflessness, of whose suffering is it? Who suffers when we suffer? The one who loves us most, the one who loves us with pure love, suffers when we suffer. And that's God. So, um, we want to do all we can to please the one we love and who loves us so much. That's all part of the Song of Songs, that beautiful allegory of Christ and the Beloved, of God and us. God, our lover, and us, the Beloved of God. So that's all I have to say, but... Um, Join me in uh, boot camp, all for the love of God and himself, if you want. And I'm starting to actively practice and train myself to have this kind of gesture, open hand, and let it just roll off. Let it roll off. And rather than this clutching in of, here, Lord or hear someone else who will like it, or hear, um, for the love of God, and 
away from self rather than selfish me and what I want and indulge yourself. Oh, when my friend said, oh, you go ahead and indulge yourself. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. And I talked about that before about how it can seem strange to other people. But she's a good enough friend. I decided it's worth explaining it to her. And then she says, well, I can't do what you do. I don't have it in me to do what you do. She said, I wish I did. Well, in the morning, I'm going to write back to her and say, yes, you do have it in you to do these things, to practice these things, and to seek God for the love and love of God in himself, and to learn to love in that way by pondering how God loves us. He loves us purely. So those are ways that we can at least get an introduction of the type of love that God will bless us with when he wills. In the meantime, we're readying ourselves. I am. I think lots of you guys are too. So it's really the only way. We have to train the will and the intellect in our souls. The soul is the seat of love in our being. And that's where God, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, radiate love to us, is into our souls. So we can talk about that too. I, I have some notes on that in the John of the Cross course. Um that I took over in Avila, Spain, the summer after my mother passed. My daughters encouraged me with that. My son was fine with it, too, that I go do that, attempt it. We didn't know if I would even make it. And I did bottom out. I had to fly back soon. I didn't get to stay as long as I had planned. It was going to be another dream come true. To they were They had arranged for me to have a uh, a, an apartment of the Carmelites right across from the monastery where Teresa of Avila's incorruptible heart is and where she had died, the last convent that she had stayed in. And I was going to be allowed to stay in their visitor apartment for three months, just stay there and pray and explore and read. I had books, but my body couldn't do it. So I was there 22 days, including travel, two days of travel. So um, not in the apartment even. I hadn't even gotten that far. I was blessed to be able to stay in a, in a community, a religious community, an old, old, like a castle, they called them, but they were small. They were like mansions for noble people. And um, in Avila, in the old town of Avila, in, w within the walls, and uh, but they were having the hottest summer in 10 years. And there was no air conditioning, and my pain just skyrocketed. And I became so ill that I, and also something came over me that was, sort of felt like I, I needed to get back. I needed to get back. Part of it was this priest that was in trouble that um, I was dealing with. But it was um, mostly just I knew that it, the pain was going to get very, very bad. And they weren't equipped for that. To, to No one, you know, weren't responsible to take care of me when that happens and it gets very intense the pain does when it gets out of control so and with the weather like that it wasn't going to change either I was going to be sick pain sick so got back but um it was a miracle I made it um God has allowed me things that I ordinarily can't do and that's also proof that, yes, if it's something God wills, like detaching and learning selflessness so that we can better learn to love as God loves, his selfless love, 
then he'll he'll help us. He'll he'll make it happen. So I've got to explain this to that friend. Yes, you can. You you do have the capability. If you want that, you don't need to. She's um she believes in God. Um, she's very angry against the Catholic Church because of a husband that she married who was Catholic and had not the spiritual life in him or attitude. It was more things that had been passed down that really still aren't that accurate. She was convinced of some things, and I said, no, the Catholic Church does not believe that. That's not part of the theology. But, well, my husband said, and I said, well, but he was misinformed, brought up with some different ideas. So um, that's what we do also is try to help people understand and not give up faith, not give up their faith. Um, she's not going anywhere, but she's ill now herself. So it, it's okay. We get to that point where, where we can't physically participate. And often by then, we have a relationship with God that is very intimate. And that's something I was, I was reading about uh, Blessed John Toller. T-A-U-L-E-R, 13th century mystic German. And uh, he wrote, to his fame are 80 sermons that were outstanding that he wrote and preached back when he was alive. But he was one who understood. It was a, more of a new a new breaching into this idea and notion, not notion, but reality, that, um, as Toller put it, doing external exercises is that if you can have intimacy with God and get to know God personally, that's as beneficial, if not more, than doing spiritual exercises of, you know, like reading through so many prayers or uh, praying so many of this or that and or of um, fasting on bread and water that rather than doing these external action exercises, uh, being close and getting to know God personally is very important and more so in a way. To have an intimate relationship with God will progress us spiritually. That's what Toller was getting at. So I thought that was good to share with you too, that these things evolved over time. The progression, the Holy Spirit enlightening um, different souls on earth, different mystics and others to recognize these things and to then change the trajectory of what everyone thought up until that time. So um, the boot camp, the doing the exercises of detachment is for the training of the will and the intellect to the point of selflessness, so that selflessness becomes second nature. It's not for the sake of denying ourselves something, a treat or whatever. That's It's the exercise of training ourselves. To deny our self-love is what it is. So I wanted to explain that. God bless his real presence in us and... I will get back to some other videos that don't deal with this topic. I'm just finding I'm on a roll. God has me on a roll of being inflamed by this because I asked for that, that the living flame of love would catch me on fire. 
for love of God and himself. So it's, you know, ask and ye shall receive, especially if it's something that God wills. And God does will us to love, to love God in himself and to understand all the aspects and attributes of how God loves us so purely. That helps us to understand and to know and to learn and then to practice and then to wait for God to give us that gift, that supernatural gift of pure love. Maybe a little bits of it on earth and definitely as we progress on the other side. That's the goal. See you tomorrow, God willing and body able.